Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can authorize actions on your library component. So authorization is a very important part of any application. And when you're building your library components, it's your responsibility as a developer to perform the authorizations. So let's go in and see how we can do that on today's episode. So for today's episode, guys, I have prepared a simple example. So I have a project from one of the courses on my YouTube channel. It's my blog project. If you guys are interested, you can just check out the link in the description or just go to my channel on the playlist. There is a blog course playlist. So long story short, guys, we have this library component over here. As you can see, I have highlighted it and it's basically showing a bunch of blog posts, right? This is a blog application. And we have like using library as pag for pagination and a bunch of other things like sorting and things like that. And I also have a delete button, which is going to be what we are using for authorization today, right? So if I click on any of these, if you guys pay attention over here, we have 167 posts. If I click on this button, I'm able to actually go ahead and delete these posts, right? So the button does indeed work. And again, I'm not even logged in, right? So there is, we're not even checking if the user is logged in, zero authorization of any kind. And to take a look at the PHP code, so I have a simple library component. You guys can ignore everything, all these properties. It's kind of irrelevant to the, today's videos. So what you need to focus on is this method over here, basically public function delete post, right? So any public function you have on your library component is of course accessible by your front end users. So this method uh, receives a post and then calls delete on it, right? So it's an eloquent model. So of course we can go ahead and call delete on it. Very simple stuff. And I do have a reminder here, always authorize. And to show you guys the blade file, in case you're uh, wondering, uh, you can ignore everything else. Just pay attention to this highlighted text over here. We have a simple button and we're using wire click. And then inside of wire click, we are calling the method I just showed you guys, right? And then we're passing it in the ID of the post we want to delete. So basically this button over here, this is the blade file. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into how we can perform authorization. I don't want to take too much time on this. So authorization in LIBOR is exactly the same way you would do it inside your Laravel controller. So LIBOR doesn't really force you to do it in a specific way. You're free to do it however you like. So the simplest way, uh, if you guys are not familiar with, for example, Laravel gates or policies, is you can just do a simple if statement, for example, on your application and do any kind of check you like. For example, you could say if auth Yes, if the user is not logged in, you can go ahead and maybe redirect them or you can do something like abort 403, right? So this is kind of similar to how you would do it on your Laravel applications, right? Or alternatively, for example, if you have rules or permissions, uh, we can go ahead and do something like auth. I'll do a user is admin, right? So I do have a method on my user model is admin. In this case, I want to check the user is not an admin. So I add this over here. So I add a negation. And uh, so in this case, if I reload, I don't even need to reload, but if I try to click the button, as you can see, it's telling me 403 forbidden, right? So this is the simplest way of doing authorization. Uh, however, generally, uh, you probably want to go ahead and use a lot of gates or policies because they are a bit more reusable and it's also easier to change them in the future, right? So if you guys are not familiar with gates or policies in Laravel, you can kind of skip this part. Or if you want to learn more, I do have videos for gates and policies on my YouTube channel. There are also great videos and tutorials on the internet. But in this case, I do have a policy set up for my post model. And in this case, it's called post policy. And I'm using the default boilerplate Laravel code. So in this case, I have a method of delete for the delete action authorization, as you guys can see. And I do a simple check. I just check if the user is admin, then I allow them to delete, right? So in this case, if you want to do authorization, it's exactly identical to Laravel controllers. You can do this, authorize your action name or basically the ability or the permission. And then if there is a model, we can go ahead and pass it in, right? Just like this. So this is exactly identical to how you would do it on your Laravel controllers. And this will automatically basically throw an exception and let the user know, hey, they don't have the permission to perform this action. Okay, so if I try again, I'll do reload again. And if I click on this, as you can see, it gives me 403, but you can see it says this action is unauthorized, right? So this is probably the simplest way, and this is the way I personally do it. I really like the syntax for it. It's very easy to read. So that's one way. Now, if you guys prefer, we can also go ahead and use, there are a couple of different ways of doing it in Laravel. For example, you can also go ahead and use the gate uh, facade. And in this case, for example, do something like allows. Now with allows, it does not kind of 
throw an exception or return anything. So it just returns true or false. So you do need to go ahead and add like an if statement of sorts around it, right? So for example, in this case, we can say allows delete posts. So this allows method returns true if the user has permission. So I do need to negate that. And then uh, obviously if they're not allowed to do it, we can do something like abort, I don't know, 403. So this is another alternative way of doing it. It's up to you guys to kind of pick which way you prefer. So let's go ahead and test this out as well. Uh, I'll click on here. As you can see, we get forbidden. Uh, you can also do prevents. This is kind of the alternative to this. So this is also possible. So let me try. Sorry, denies, not prevents. My bad. I haven't used it in a well. while. So if I click on it, as you can see, we also again get 403. So this is also one more way of doing it. Now, if you want to use gate, uh, obviously it's useful if you want to customize how you're doing it. If you want a lot of all to handle that, similar to this.authorize, you can also do gate. Dot or gate authorize. So it is an aesthetic method. It works exactly identical to this.authorize. So kind of the same way. This will indeed kind of automatically abort and give the user a 403 response. So if I try again, as you can see, we get this action is unauthorized. These are basically almost identical way of doing it. One uses the gate facade, one you're using this dot authorized. So for me personally, I prefer the first method generally, most of the time. So I'm gonna keep this one. So it, the only thing you guys need to remember is always authorize any public method you have on your library component. Uh, because they're always accessible by the user, right? So that's the simple stuff. Now, you can also do the simple thing on your blade file as well. So for example, if I log out, in this case, I'm not logged in, maybe you do not want to show this button, right? So how can you do that? Well, let me go ahead and open the blade file again for this. So for this one, of course, you can go ahead and do an if statement of sorts. But if you're using gates or policies, you can go ahead and use the can directive. And uh, let's do, for example, can delete. So your policy method name in this case, delete. And then obviously as a second argument, you need to pass in the model itself. So in this case, I pass the model and I wrap it around my button, right? So super simple stuff. This is exactly how you do it on Laudable, guys. So that's why I'm not kind of trying to explain it too much. If you know how to do it in Laudable, regular Laudable development, you know how to do it with Laudable Livewire as well. So, and if I'm reload now, as you guys can see, the delete button is actually gone, right? And to test it out, I'll go ahead and I'll log in as an admin account so as you can see at the top, there is nothing. If I log in now, now we get an admin. So I'm logged in as an admin. So let me go ahead and check the page again. As you can see, uh, we now have this X button. So uh, this can directive is indeed working. And if I click on it, as you can see, I'm able to delete these posts, right? I do have another user that isn't an admin. So let me show you guys how it works if the user is not an admin. So I think it's this user down here. And you can tell it's not an admin, there is no admin link over here. And if I go to the page, we not only cannot see this button, uh, we also won't be able to perform because we're not authorizing it. So in this case, I'll just manually disable this. So let's say someone you know, tries to be smart, they manually add the button. If I click on it, it tells me unauthorized action. Okay, so that's the basics of authorization in Liver, guys. Always make sure you're authorizing your actions especially if it's a critical or important action you're performing. And also, if possible, hide the button. If the user does not have permission to do it, you can go ahead and use the can directive. And again, the way you do it is up to you guys. You can go ahead and do it whichever way you like. You can also go ahead and do something like uh, auth user uh, can as well. There are many different ways of doing it in Laravel. So pick whichever way you like and make sure you're always performing authorization. So that's it guys for today's video. Very simple video, but I thought it's still important to mention it to you guys in case some of you have questions about it. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. That's the best way to support the channel and let me know to make, you know, help me make more videos. YouTube promotes the videos more if people like it and comment, things like that. So I appreciate it if you guys, you know, show some support. And as always, I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.